to another read aloud with me, Mrs. Miller. Today, I'm actually going to be reading you a nonfiction book, which means it's a book about things that are real. But the thing that's kind of fun about this book is that it almost looks like a fiction book and it almost sounds like a fiction book, but it's actually filled with lots of really interesting true facts about sea creatures. So this week, your focus with your writing is going to be writing nonfiction, teaching me about something you know a lot about. So I thought it would be fun to read you a nonfiction book. It's a rhyming book, so maybe you can try to guess what word is coming up next. Here we go. Wish for a fish. All about sea creatures. I hope you like it. Oh, and this is not written by Dr. Seuss, but it is a cat in the hat book. And it has that same rhythm, ch -ch 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 -ch, right? Bum ba da bum, bum ba da bum that we talked about it has that same Dr. Seuss rhythm, even though it's not written by Dr. Seuss. Okay, here we go. Wish for a fish. All about sea creatures. <clears throat> I'm the cat in the hat. And I hear that you wish to go down to the sea and visit the fish. So please climb on board SS Undersea Glubber. It is made out of shark skin and very fine rubber. It will take us down deep, deep down under the sea. We will start at the top and go deep as can be. The top parts are sunny. The bottom parts are black. We'll go to the bottom and then we'll come back. Sunny zone, twilight zone, dark zone, abyss, the trench at the bottom you won't want to miss. Wow. So these are true facts about the ocean. Even though it sounds like a poem and sounds like a story, these are true facts. It's so cool. We're gonna start in the sunny zone, sea level to 660 feet. The sunny zone is where our sea visit starts. Most of our sea life is found in these parts. The law is of the sea is the same as on land. I'll call it the food chain so you'll understand. Big fish, big fish eat smaller fish and so on until you get down to one of the tiniest krill. If you're wishing for fish, there are lots of them here. I see herring and mackerel swimming quite near. Fish can lay eggs. They have fins and fish tails, and most fish have bodies all covered with scales. These scales, they are coated with slippery slime. The slime keeps out germs, at least most of the time. Wow, that's interesting. I didn't know that about fish. Fish open their mouths and they let water in. That's when the gills job really starts to kick in. Gills sift through the water and pull out the air. They help the fish find all the air that is there. The jellyfish is a most interesting fella. He looks kind of like a transparent umbrella. Stay away from his tentacles, those long stringy things. They stun prey by giving off hundreds of stings. Of the hundreds of kinds of sharks in the sea, we only have time now to visit with three. The six inch long dogfish, no, it never barks. The 50 foot whale shark, the Mack truck of sharks. And what have we here? Ah, it's called the great white for its white belly, great teeth, and great big deep bite. A shark grows its teeth in neat rows in its face, and when the front row wears out, the next row takes its place. As, oh, shark bodies are made of the same kind of stuff as your ears and your nose, and that's what makes them so tough. That stuff is called cartilage. It folds and it bends, and when it is torn, the cartilage men's. So interesting. What else can we see in this nice sunny water? Oh say, see the manatee and her calf daughter? Manatees are mammals like you and like me. They have lungs and give milk to their babies, you see. 
another sea mammal we'll see is the whale. It's the largest of mammals we'll see without fail. It's split into two, toothed whales, like the orca, and baleen, like the blue. Baleen fills the blue whale's mouth like a grill as water flows through it and strains out the krill. The blue whale weighs tons, maybe 90 or more. It's bigger than even a big dinosaur. Wow. It's a big animal. Look how tiny they are next to the whale. Holy moly. And look at all that krill that he's eating. These toothed whales are orcas, and few can defeat them. They like to hunt seals and to catch them and eat them. The narwhal's one tusk sticks out like a horn. It's so much like a one-horned unicorn. All whales hold their breath when they dive down below, and when they come up, they let it out with a blow. But before we go deeper, let's all wave hello to our mammal pals, dolphins. What? That's them down below. A dolphin can see in the night. Wonder why? Echolocation. It works like an eye. It sends out a click and the click bounces back. And the sound of that click helps the dolphin keep track of where it is going and which fish is where and whether some foe like a shark might be there. Shake hands with the octopus. Isn't it great? With arm after arm just for hugging. Yikes, eight! Dear Dick and Sweet Sally, tell me, what would you think if I told you the octopus shoots out dark ink? It squirts out the ink in some enemy's face and then swims away to a much safer place. Oh, we're going to a new zone. We're leaving the sunny zone and heading to the twilight zone. So we're going a little deeper into the ocean now. Of all the fights that are fought in the sea, there's one that is biggest, if you're asking me. Do I hear you asking? I'm so glad you did. It's sperm whale versus giant squid. Like all whales, the sperm whale must come up for air. But this one can dive and then stay way down there for two hours or more at 3,000 feet, shopping for giant squid to eat. Oh, we're going down to the dark zone already. We're going down even deeper. Get out your flashlights. It's dark way down here. And the fish are beginning to look very queer. That means weird. The gigantura and the big mouth eel, the whip nose, which comes with its own rod and reel. Down here, it is always as black as the night. So many fish here have their very own light. They use it to locate a mate or some prey. Food hunting is hard like this day after day. <gasps> We're down to the final level called the abyss. You won't find many sea creatures here in this deep, cold sea. Sea cucumber, sea spider, and tripod are three. The abyss has a carpet of thick, yucky muck. Animals have legs, so they will not get stuck. Oh, we're at the bottom now in the trench. This is the deepest part. Before we go up, it is really a must that you visit the vents, which are cracks in Earth's crust. It is up through these vents that the hot waters spout and warm up these clams and these worms here about. Giant clams and tube worms have enough things to eat because this deep spot has unusual heat. Wow, what a strange place the bottom of the ocean is. Oh, say, can you see by my undersea clock? It's time for the fair glubber to go back to the dock. And now that our trip below sea is all done, I will bet that you too have a wish for some sun. The end. And at the back, there's a glossary with lots of words in the book. And then there's some suggestions for other books that you can read about under the sea. I love that book because, like I said, 
it sounds like a story and it rhymes and it's fun like a book not like a fiction story but it's really non-fiction and you can actually learn a lot about the ocean and undersea creatures by reading it so thanks again for joining me for another book i want you watch this again if you have to or maybe you remember on your own three facts that you learned about undersea creatures or about the ocean from this story okay i hope you have a wonderful day and i hope you keep learning and reading and having fun i'll see you next time